Hello, uh, I'm just going to do a take two. I'll wait a couple of moments for people to jump on. I feel like, yes, there we go, we're live. Okay, cool. Let me know as you're jumping on, guys, if you can hear me or not. I think there may have been a problem with my, um, with my headphones. Hey, Kel, can you hear me? Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. We were having some tech issues before. Um, okay, hopefully that's a bit better. Um, I'll wait for you guys just to give me the thumb. Can you hear me? All good? Okay. So I'll, I'll do that brief introduction again. I think everything that I said obviously wasn't, um, wasn't listened to, but essentially welcome everybody. Welcome to this pop-up spontaneous pop-up training. Um, I decided to run this training on imposter syndrome because today I've had a big, a big day um, with lots of clients and five of my clients all individually, awesome, everyone can hear me now, great. Five of my clients all individually today mentioned that they were dealing with um, imposter syndrome, that it had come up against, they'd come up against these big waves of imposter syndrome over the past couple of weeks. I've been dealing with imposter syndrome a lot in my life. It seems to, I seem to cycle in and out of it quite regularly. So it's kind of something now that I've really, I think I've learned how to deal with. I've learned how to recognize it and I've learned what to do to help me kind of to keep imposter syndrome at bay. And so when, when I had five clients today talk about this, about how they'd been cycling through this um, uh, inner, not sabotage, this imposter syndrome and how debilitating it had been for them, I thought it'd be a really good opportunity for me to jump in here and to deliver a bit of training around imposter syndrome. What is it? How can we recognize it? How can we, what tools can we use to stay out of imposter syndrome so that we are not constantly cycling in this resistance pattern because it is a resistance pattern. It seems to be that a lot of women in business in particular experience imposter syndrome and I've come to understand, I think that's, in, in many ways, I think that's um, part of the wiring around women is that we seem to really doubt our self-worth. We seem to really doubt our abilities. We need to be seeking external validation for the work that we're doing. And so a lot of, this is a lot of the work that I do with my clients is to help them really build up and nurture their own inherent sense of self-worth so that they can build their business, so that they can take their message out there, so that they can make amazing money from doing the work that they love. But um, imposter syndrome, it's, it can be like this little thing, you know, this little part of, our, of us, because it is a part of us, that really, really hangs around and it really can hang around and it can work to keep us limiting ourselves. It can work to have us doubting ourselves, to have us stuck in like perfectionism, to have us stuck in fear. And it can be very helpful to learn how to understand what to do when you're experiencing um, imposter syndrome. So what I, what I wanted to do today is just talk a little bit about my experience, how, what I do whenever I notice imposter syndrome, how I, how I sort of look at it now this is after nearly nine years in business where I've been coming face to face with imposter syndrome quite a lot. And then I wanted to take you through a few processes around how you can actually start to release imposter syndrome from your system, how you can actually create a relationship with it that is not so debilitating. So let's give me a thumbs up, guys, if you've experienced imposter syndrome. Actually, let me know. Type in the comments if it's something that you that you've experienced that you found has been really, really debilitating for you in your business, if it's something that you have really struggled with, I'd love to know how, how has that impacted you over, over the years that you've been in business and obviously that you haven't been in business prior to being in business. And also what is it that you do now when you experience imposter syndrome? So essentially we've got imposter syndrome, which is a feeling of unworthiness, feeling of being a fraud, of being a phony, of being a fake, and if you've ever thought to yourself, you know, everyone's going to find out that I actually don't know what I'm talking about or, you know, who do I think I am? I don't have the kind of experience. I can't take my mission out there. I can't talk about this because I'm a fake. I'm a fake. I'm a phony. And essentially, when we have these kinds of beliefs running in our system, it's, it's really it works to limit our di Dania. Let me know if I'm pronouncing your name right, Dania. Contributing factor to playing small, staying hidden. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I was going to say. When we have imposter syndrome running in the background, it, it works to keep us small. It works to keep us in that safe zone. And we're going to talk about why. Why is it that this is happening? 
and it keeps us safe. We're not getting out there. We're not exploring our message. We're not sharing our message. We're not, you know, selling our services. We, we're really stuck in this resistance pattern, which has us fear that everyone, if we do that, if we start taking our mission out there, if we start sharing our message, that everyone is going to realize that we, that we don't know what we're talking about, that we're actually a big fat phony. And it can be really debilitating when we're stuck in this, especially if, and I've, what I've come to understand is that it doesn't matter if you have 20 years of experience in your field, if you have imposter syndrome running in your system, it doesn't matter. It's like that it doesn't, it doesn't seem to care. It doesn't look at that and go, well, 20 years obviously makes me a specialist. We're still going to come from this, this place of not believing that we are worthy or not believing that we're worthy of success or that we are able to, you know, to really know what we're talking about. And so overcoming imposter syndrome is really important. If we're going to be taking our mission out there, if we're going to be building our tribe, if we're going to be building our business, going global, having a bigger impact, making more money, having more sales, we need to really learn how to deal with imposter syndrome when it arises. So I wanted to just talk a little bit about Lou Solomon, who's an expert in imposter syndrome. She says that imposter syndrome sits on four, on the, on the fantastic four. So these are four pillars that feed into imposter syndrome, and that is anxiety, self-doubt, fear of failure and perfectionism. Now, I'm sure we've all of us have experienced this, especially in our business, but like in all parts of our life, yeah? Especially, you know, for me, self-doubt, fear of failure. I mean, all of them. Apart from anxiety, I don't experience that much anxiety. But if you have one of those four pillars that you seem to um, experience a lot of, and, you know, who doesn't, like I said, then that can really feed into imposter syndrome. It can really, it can work to give imposter syndrome a lot more, a lot more brunt, a lot more juice to work with. So the way that I look at imposter syndrome is that it's actually a form of self-sabotage. When we are cycling in self-sabotage, we are resisting, we are limiting the work that we're doing. We're limiting our success. There's something that we're doing, whether it's conscious or unconscious, that is sabotaging our the work that we're doing whether that's in our business in our relationships in our health with our with the food that we eat it comes in many different forms but with imposter syndrome the reason why i think it's i believe it's a form of self sabotage is because of the way that it actually limits us from taking action if we don't know how to deal with it it limits us it keeps us small and it keeps us hidden and when we can think about it as, so when we're talking about any, anything that's a part within us, so I look at them from the perspective of like the inner saboteur. The, there's a part within me that is the inner saboteur. And if you're familiar with this term parts work, you'll know what I mean. But when we can come to understand that within us, there's many other voices. There's me, there's the egoic me, there's the higher self me, but there's also many, many other voices. And we can actually, we can have a lot, it can be very powerful to identify what are the primary voices that are going on in your head. And if you have an inner saboteur or an inner critic, which is also really the inner saboteur, that is loud, that is negative, that is, you know, really working to, to hold you back, to keep you small, to, um, you know, to keep you in the shadows, then it can be helpful to look at it like this. There's a part within you that is trying, at the end of the day, it's trying to keep you safe. And so when we can look at it from this perspective, it actually kind of diffuses the fuel a little bit. So let's talk about that. Why is it trying to keep me safe? Well, because if I go global, if I share my message with the world, if I become a, a internet sensation, I might open myself up to all sorts of things, to judgment, to ridicule, what would my friends and family think, I might be betrayed, I might be abandoned or rejected, all of these fears and potentially that's come from things that you've experienced in the past can really come into play here. So this very, very deep subconscious version of you or this part of you rather is really working very hard in the background to try and keep you safe. Now it's an outdated coping mechanism essentially, and it's trying to keep you safe so that, and essentially it's trying to keep you in the space that it already knows. When we 
up level in our business, when we take our mission out, when we really start to take our business out there, when we start to make more money, when we start to have more clients. And obviously we're talking about this through the filter of business because this is Business Alchemy Hub and this is my passion. And you can, you can apply this to any area in your life. When we do that, when we up level in our life, in our business, it's scary, you know. We, we come face to face with a whole host of different things. So it can be really powerful to understand that these parts of us, even though they're misguided, even though they're really not very good at making us, at helping us to be successful, they are trying to keep us safe from a very outdated perspective. But I'll tell you the impact that it has on us when these parts within us run rampant. So if you can imagine that there is a little girl and she's, you know, seven or eight years old and she's standing on a netball court and she's about to shoot a ball into a netball hoop and her coach behind her is going, you can't do it. What makes you think you should even try? You're an idiot. You're a phony. You're a fake. You've got no idea what you're doing. There's no point. You may as well give up now. And so what happens, right? She goes to take a shot and, of course, she misses. And, you know, what's the likelihood of her getting back on that court if she has this coach that's, that's doing, that's saying these things? Essentially, when, when um, imposter syndrome or sabotage runs rampant or your inner critic, any of these parts of you, when they run rampant and they speak like this, this is the impact they're having on us. This is the impact they're having on our inner child, on the little version of Tash or the little version of Lisa or the little version of Kelly that's just wanting to do a really good job, that's just wanting to be loved and that's just wanting to be adored for her work and for her success. So we have to really know how to, how to work with it. And... By working with it, I don't mean like completely denying it and going, I'm just not even going to look at that part of myself. What I mean is to actually learn how to invite it in, how to ask it to join, your, join you at the table, how to actually start a dialogue with it so that you can understand what it is that it wants, what it is that it's trying to protect you from. What is it that it fears? Because there's going to be a fear lodged in there that it's trying to protect you from. And it's likely going to be something that relates or is reflective of a, of some, of a fear that you had from something that happened when you were a child. So, um, so what I wanted to do is um, I've got some notes here. Let me know how's that landing for you guys. Give me a thumbs up or a love heart if you feel like you're resonating with this. If this is something that, you're, that you've experienced a lot of. Um, but what I wanted to do is take you through a couple of processes and both of these processes need to, need you to have a pen and a piece of paper because we're going to be doing a little bit of writing or you can actually type it into your computer, whatever you prefer. But, um, excuse me, the first um, exercise that I wanted to do with you, it's, it's a process called the Voices of Resistance. Kel, I'm glad to hear. I've just sent you a love heart. Awesome. The voices of resistance. So we need to understand, like I said, these parts of us, they can often live in our shadow, the shadow part of us, the shadow version of, of our subconscious, that, that part of us that denies certain things, that doesn't, you know, it's like the rejected part of us. So if you're in a saboteur, if the part of you that believes in, that believes that you're an imposter, if you're in a critic, if it's a part of you that you really deny, that you reject, that you refuse to look at, it actually becomes a shadow and then it has a huge amount of power over us. One of the best things that we can do when we have rejected a part of us such to the point that it's become a part of our shadow is to learn how to have a dialogue with it, learn how to actually coax it into our consciousness, invite it to the table. Hi, Karen, nice to see you here. Invite it to the table, actually allow it to come in and, and start that dialogue so that we can, so that it can, it's because essentially it's a part of us, it just wants to keep us safe. And the more we're able to love it, the more we're able to welcome it in, the more we're able, the more it actually integrates into our system. So now, whenever I find myself going into um, imposter syndrome or sabotage or self-doubt, perfectionism, you know, um, fear of failure, any of those defense mechanisms or protection mechanisms, now I'm able to, to do these kinds of processes. I'm able to bring mindfulness to this part of me. I'm able to ask it questions. I'm able to journal and write out what it is that it wants so that it doesn't take me down. I used to cycle around, cycle through this 
for sometimes weeks or months at a time. And it really, it, it like my business just stalled for about a year because I was so caught up and preoccupied with these versions, with these parts of myself, you know, the, the inner saboteur, the inner critic, the part of myself that, you know, believed I was an imposter. And when I was able to really learn how to work with it, how to move through it, how to really um, enjoy it, you know, bring it in. Hi, Michelle, nice to see you here. Um, really integrate it in, then it loses all of its power. It really loses all of its power. It's pretty amazing. And we can understand that it's just trying to keep us safe. So now what I do is I have a little chat with my inner child or I'll ask, you know, that little version of Tash, what is it that you need, darling? What is it that you need to feel safe? Because obviously there's a part of you that doesn't feel safe right now. Hence why, we, why we've created these other parts, these other shadows that can have so much energy over us. So what is it that you need, darling, that's going to help you feel more at ease, that's going to help you feel safe? And as soon as I do that, generally it actually dissipates really quickly. So this process that I want to take you through, it's called the voice of resistance or voices of resistance. And we're going to work, you can do this process with any resistance pattern that you have, whether that's um, overwhelm, whether that's exhaustion, exhaustion can be a form of resistance or sabotage, whether that's self-doubt, whether that's perfectionist, whether that's fearful, whether that's anxious, you can do it with any, any different resistance part of you you can actually do this, um, this process with. So what I want to invite you to do, because we're talking about imposter syndrome today, I want to invite you to work with this part of you, whether it's the inner saboteur, the inner critic, or the inner imposter that feels, you know, like she just, you know, she doesn't know, she doesn't believe that she's got anything to offer the world. She believes that she's a fake and that everyone's going to find out that she doesn't know what she's talking about. It's just a part of you, right? So I want to do, what I want to do is, um, oh, hey, okay, I'm just going to catch up on some of these. Hi, Michelle. Yeah, you did make it. I hope you had a great night. Kyla, hi. Oh, my God, I hear you on loosing a lot of time to these shadow parts. Yep, big time. They can take up so much of our energy. So grab a pen and a piece of paper, and we're going, I'm going to give you some journaling prompts. So the first one that we want to do is we want to take out our pen and we want to write, I am... The name of the defense so that might be I am imposter and I like to personify them I like to give them a name um, so for example I was working the other day with my a part of me that was overwhelmed and I called her overwhelmed Amelia overwhelmed Amelia you know this part of me who's really overwhelmed and who doesn't know how to keep moving forward so it can help to give them a name or um, perfectionist penny or um, what are we talking? We're talking about imposter. So I'm, you know, I am imposter Annie or whatever it is. So I am, and you write down the name of the defense. The next thing that you write is, and I'll, what I'll do is I'll put this in the, in the um, copy and paste and I'll put it in the, in the thing here, in the chat. I am, and then the name of the defense. And then the second one is I love and protect Tash, or I love and protect Kyla. I love and protect your name. I love and protect Michelle, whatever it is that you are called. I'm going to be cutting and pasting a little bit as we go along. The third journaling prompt is pop that in here. It is my job to protect her from. And what you're going to be doing here is just allowing stream of consciousness because what you're going to find often is that this is related to something that you've forgotten potentially. It's my job to protect her from, and when we can understand this about our part, the, part, these parts of ourselves, that they're trying to protect us from something, it's like um, we, have a, we have an insight into them. You know, there's... Um, compassion there. So it's my job to protect her from, that might be from pain, from um, criticism, from betrayal. And then the next one, I do that by, so you can always come back if you feel like you need a bit more time come back to this and um, 
and I really encourage you to spend some time really journaling on these prompts here because they are very, very insightful. I, every time I do it, I'm always like pretty gobsmacked at, at what comes up. So I do that. I protect her by telling her that she doesn't know what she's talking about, telling her that she's a phony, whatever it is for you. Oh, Sue Ellen. Oh, that worked. A word appeared when I wasn't even thinking about it. Yeah. This is the power of the subconscious. Okay. The next one. I do whatever it takes because otherwise what, what might happen? Because otherwise she might be rejected. She might, someone might try to take her to court. What is it that, what's the fear there? This is what we're getting to. We're getting to the fear. Okay, so the next journaling prompt is, I'm going to copy and paste. I don't want her to feel or realise. I don't want her to feel or realise. And this can, this can often evoke a lot of really interesting insights. I don't want her to feel or realise. And then the next one. I'm really good at my job. I know exactly how to, how to what? How to keep her safe from harm, how to keep her safe from betrayal, how to keep her safe from rejection, how to keep her safe from criticism. And then the final one, I'll give you another few more minutes. I do this because I love her and I want to keep her safe. And it's when we can come to that point that these parts within us in their really outdated and misguided ways are trying to keep us safe. It just takes, it's like it diffuses the pressure it pulls that emotional charge right down. So I'd love to hear some of your insights here, guys, if you're willing and happy to share. What is it? What did, what did that evoke for you? Has that brought up any new insights into these different parts of yourself, particularly imposter syndrome, if that's the part that you've been primarily focusing on? What are those insights? What is that part of you that believes you're an imposter? What is she trying to protect you from? What is she trying to keep you safe from? What does she not want you to feel or to realize? What's the fear? What's the fear that's driving this part of you that's driving their behavior? Parts work is really, really interesting. Um, I remember I was talking to a friend. I haven't done Vipassana, but I have a couple of friends who have, and they said that when they were in this silence meditation, they could suddenly, like, it, I remember my friend saying it was like there was, 50 people speaking in his head and it was all these different parts of him the part of him that judged himself and everyone else the part of him that was you know loved him it was so many of these different parts within him I remember him saying it was like they were just all of them talking clambering to talk over each other at once so let me know if that's been interesting I wanted to kind of change gears a little bit because voices the voices of resistance um, journaling exercise is one part one part of learning how to overcome imposter syndrome or self-sabotage that can be very, very effective. But the other thing that I want, I wanted to take you through another little process that I, it's actually very simple and I love, love, love to do this because it just brings, it elevates us into this completely different space when we do this exercise. So kind of shifting gears, keep your pen and your piece of paper. What we're going to talk about now is what's your experience? What has been your life experience that has led you to this point right now? What has been, what have been the qualifications that the official qualifications that you've learned 
the achievements that you've generated, what have been the, how much money have you spent to become the woman that you are now, to have the knowledge that you have right now? And like, I want you to start getting this out of your head and onto this paper. You know, what are the things that you've learned? What are the big fears that you've moved through? What are the big health challenges that you've overcome? What are the big lessons that you've learned from, your, from all of the breakups that you've been through? What are, what are your life experiences that have gotten you to this point right now in your life, in your business and in your life? And I really encourage you to spend some time sitting with this question. Spend some time like really going through your life experience, rec all of the recognition that you've generated, all of the accomplishments, all of the things that you've done, all of the things that you've overcome, anything and everything and, and I want you to put this on your study wall or put it somewhere where you're going to look at it all the time because imposter syndrome when we are present with this this level of um, truth about our journey when we actually sit with that and we go shit I've done a lot and I've learned a lot and how many thousands of hours has gone into me learning the things that I've needed to learn to get me to this point right now, whether that's in your business or in your life. When we're really present with this, present with this awareness, we are, it's like there is, there's no room for imposter syndrome. There is no room. Who am I to say I don't know what I'm talking about? Of course I know what I'm talking about. This is my life experience. Even more so if the work that you do in your business is your soul work. And if you're here in Business Alchemy Hub, I'm going to guarantee, I'm going to take a bet that the work that you do in your business is the work that you feel like you've been put on this planet to do. If that's the case, then this even more so, this is even more so, so profound. Yeah, Dania, you've said so profound. It's true. When we can sit with this, and I want you to write it out, write out all of the qualifications, all of the hours, all of the dollars that you've spent, all of the hours that you've spent in learning, in perfecting, in trialing, in testing, in failing, failing, and then getting back on the horse and keeping on going. And when you can really sit with this, like when you can sit with this is my life experience, you know, this has funneled me up until this point right now to do the work that I do right now, there's no room for imposter syndrome in that. There is absolutely no room. It's just a completely different level. Like imposter syndrome, if you think about it, it's a very low level part of you that exists in the wounded ego, that exists in, you know, in the wounded ego, that little girl who was, but something happened and she made a decision about the world, she made a decision about how she wasn't good enough, how she wasn't loved enough. But when we can kind of come into this space, it really, it takes us up to, it's almost like it connects us in with our higher self and we can have complete and utter appreciation for ourselves, for the journey that we've gone through. You know, how many fears have you had to face in your life to get you here right now? How many obstacles have you had to overcome to get you here right now? You know, how many ways have you grown how many tears have you have you cried to get you to this point? How many laughter? How many moments of of joy of joy and laughter, and terror and fear have you experienced to get you to this place right now where you are at? And when we can really sit with that and honor that and deeply like recognize that, there is absolutely no room for imposter syndrome. There is no room for it. It's like whoever I work with. They're getting an amazing deal because all of this experience is packaged up and is delivered into the work that I offer them, especially if the work you do is service-based. So I'd love to hear from you. What are you present to when you're sitting with this? You know, what's available for you when you really get present to the experience that you've had over your whole life that has led you to this place? where you are right now, doing the work that you do right now, working with the people that you work with, your soulmate clients right now, there is no room for you to doubt your self-worth in that. There is no room for you to question your value. There is no room for you to question whether you're a phony when you are present to all of that, 
when you are present to your life experience. Hi, Rosie. Welcome, darling. Nice to see you here. So I hope that that has been helpful. I'd love to hear from you guys. What's been your experience around this? You know, is this something that you sit with regularly? Are you regularly able to come into this space of acknowledging all of the things that you've learned, all of the fears that you've faced, all of the things you've had to overcome to get to this point that you're in right now? And my experience is that when I when I'm experiencing imposter syndrome and I'm really doubting whether I have what it takes, when I'm doubting whether everyone's going to find out whether I'm a phony, whether I'm doubting all of this, when I come back to this and I come back to my life experience, when I read over the testimonials that people have written for me, I used to have a little success book. Every time I had, would finish a, a brilliant client session, I'd go in and I'd write about it. I would write in client testimonials. I'd put photos, things that really inspired me. I should do that, but I haven't done it for a while. Um, when I, whenever, so, so that whenever I really doubt whether I am, whether I'm on the right path, whether I doubt whether I actually know what I'm talking about, whether I go into imposter syndrome, I, I would go back over and read this book, this success book. And it would just bring me back to this place of, I know what I'm talking about. And this is my soul work. And my business is the vehicle I've chosen for me to explore that, for me to really take my soul work out there. And like, that's pretty profound. That's pretty profound, especially if we work in soulful business. Alrighty. So look, I feel like that's probably um, a good time for us to wrap up, but um, I'll just have a look over my notes to make sure I haven't missed anything. No, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that's good. Love to hear how that's been for you guys. If that's um, been useful, please let me know, write in a comment. Um, I'd love to hear whether that's resonated. Any time you experience imposter syndrome, come back to this, come back, ask it questions. What is it that you want? What are you afraid of? What is it that you feel I'm not giving you? What are you worried is going to happen? What do you need from me? Come back to your, your sense of um, self-achievement, of your sense of this is my soul work and I know what I'm talking about. This is the work I'm put on the planet to do. This is the work that I'm here to do and that's an incredibly empowering place. There's so many people out there who have no idea what they're here to do and luckily enough, we are able to help them because I'm sure a lot of people in this group actually work in that space where they help people come into complete transformation. So, yep, that's about it for me, guys. Um, I hope that's been useful. Oh, all of these comments. Okay, Kelly, I received my first booking for my most expensive package today. Oh, wow. I was initially so excited, but it was quickly swamped with imposter thoughts. Wow, Kel. Okay, so this has come at a good time. Congratulations, first of all. That's so exciting. And yeah, I encourage you to really sit with that and to really look at your life experience. And I know for a fact that, you know, the, the work that you do, the photography that you take, like you, there's no, there's no, you don't have a right to question that. It's so incredible. Sue Ellen, it's frozen on my screen. Okay, cat, have to scoot. Thank you for, thank you for joining, Sue. Lovely to have you here. Kyla, yes, resonates, no imposter, but the others, yes. Well, that's good that there's no imposter, Kyla, awesome. All right, everybody, take care, much love, and uh, I'll chat with you soon. All righty, bye.